Hey everyone, and welcome to the channel. Uh, welcome to our channel. My name is Kevin Deninger, and uh, I've been designing my own custom cards for about a part of 20 years now. Um, this channel is to be about the discussion of the creation of custom magic cards because designing custom magic cards is fun, and it's something to do in your spare time, and it's fun to get your ideas into card form. Uh, so today's episode. We are talking about Red's color pie philosophy. And Red is all about freedom. Red just wants to do its own thing. And there are colors that doesn't like to let Red do its own thing. Um, red is very an emotional color. Um, it acts on impulse. It, uh, it solves problems with strength and brawn. Uh, it uses violence, brutality, destruction. Um, red is very chaotic and uses randomness and spontaneity. Red is very mischievous. Red always uses elements of fire and earth. Red likes to fight and brawl. And, you know, there's a pretty good theme of barbarianism in red. So, um, first card here I've got pulled up is uh, kind of an example of red's use of emotion. I kind of try to base this on uh, vicious rumors. Um, so it deals one damage to each opponent. Each opponent sacrifices an artifact. And then uh, creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. It's all three very red things dealing damage to your opponents, making your opponents do something, you know, destruction, and then um, buffing, your, buffing your guys. So that's, this is a kind of a, <clears throat> a design I threw together just for this, um, this, uh, this podcast. So I'm going to go through each one of these, just kind of highlight why, uh, this is, these cards are red. Um, this, this is kind of a fun favorite of mine. It's a homage to, uh, Bloodshot Cyclops or Chuck as, as we like to call him. Um, so you pay two mana. Sacrifice a creature, and he deals damage. You know the creature's sacrifice power to <laughs> any target. You can only activate the ability once each turn. So it's less expensive than a Bloodshot Cyclops, um, but it's better than... There's another creature that does this too. Lower cost, like a common. But I think you have to, it, has, it has to have power for greater to yeah. even activate the ability. Yep, yep. Yeah. Bloodshot Trainee. Yep, that's it. Yeah. So, added a little, little uh, flavor text here. Um, you've heard of Stone Throwing Devils. This is a Devil Throwing Cyclops. Nice. So, he's got little balls and he's throwing them. So, I thought that was an appropriate flavor text. Uh, next up, we've got Boulder Blast Mage. This is basically a uh, Jaws of Stone with legs. Um, with legs means it's a creature version of an existing instant or sorcery spell. So it's basically the exact same text, except for it just has an enter the battlefield ability. So it deals <coughs> damage, <coughs> excuse me, divided as you choose among any number of targets, or X is the number of mountains you control. So this is a very red caring about, you know, strength of earth. Uh, Chandra's Inferno. This is a very, you know, red planeswalker who's been in the game for a long time. <clears throat> so, red likes to say, hey, my spells can be countered, my damage can be prevented, I like pain and fire. So this is a X damage red spell based on Chandra, who's saying, I'm going to burn everything. And each, each opponent, so that's pretty nasty. Um, here's a ver here's a <coughs> a good representation of chaos. Uh, search your library for a card and exile it. Then shuffle your library, and then you exile the top three cards of your library. And then put all cards exiled this way on top of your library in a random order. So hey, you can find whatever card you want, but it's going to be jumbled up in uh, the top three. So this is a very red way of tutoring. You're going to get what you want, but you might not exactly get it where you want. That's 
typically how red tutors. Uh, this one, this one I made for March Madness. Uh, so this is kind of based on um, Nightshade Assassin, except for uh, when you reveal X cards. Red cards, he deals X damage. It's a goblin. Goblins are always red. And I felt like this was kind of mischievous and damage and destruction. And, um, this one is kind of an anti-zombie one, because who doesn't hate zombies? Uh, this is a, a rider effect. It deals three damage to each creature. Red likes to deal damage to all creatures. Um, and this is just, hey, here's your zombies. And when you are dealt damage and die this this way, you get exiled. Which is another very red effect. It's like, I'm going to burn you in so bad that you're dust. Um, this is another um, kind of <clears throat> humorous card for red for goblins. Um, it's forcing a creature to attack or block when it enters. You know, red red likes to confuse its enemies, make them not block, make them want to block. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this this one I felt like it was a good representation of goblins being mischievous and you know saying, ah, come come on, come get me. Uh, this one, desperate times. This one is kind of red's way of ritualing. Red is now the color that gets rituals these days. Um, as an initial cost to cast this spell, you get you have to sacrifice a permanent, but you add red equal to the, the sacrifice permanent's mana cost. So hey, there's a payoff. There's always a payoff. The red of you know I'm gonna use something of mine to get more out of it. So. And red, red likes to ritual these days, so I felt like this was a good representation of red ritualing. Um, here's a good land destruction. I know land destruction isn't that widely seen these days, but I'm still a big fan of land destruction. I, I honestly think there should be more land destruction. Yeah, Lands I will, are the hardest thing. I will wholeheartedly yeah. agree with you on that. I think the, the drift away from decent land destruction has literally limited a play style um back in the day i wrote a whole article about this Indeed. for uh, pure mtgo where i was just like you know um every other color is getting their key mechanic made cheaper cheaper and cheaper and cheaper right and yet land destruction keeps getting more expensive and even less common to see and I think that, and I, in one sense, I understand where Wizards of the Coast is coming from because a spell that just says, like, you know, like Stone Rain, destroy target land, no one drafts that, you know, um, and the game right. is designed to be played draft. So the fact that it, that's an extremely limited card, um, you know, in design anyway, not limited as in like limited play, but limited design, it, it makes them right. not want to uh, create more cards like that. But the thing is that now what they're doing is, they're tacking on an extra ability, but then because they've added that extra ability, they've increased the cost. So like, it seems to be the staple nowadays is demolish, and that's at four. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, and, right. it's, and unfortunately, right. you know, for anyone who's playing current Magic, um, mana ramp is everywhere. So like, right. you know, the the idea of casting a demolish to target a land is terrible. Like it's 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 actually going to slow you down, rather than slow your opponent down because you just wasted your turn, you know. Um, right. There's there's one more uh, non basic land hate now. Yes. I would love to see more the... non basic land hate. Like it's, I mean, they don't right. necessarily, you know, like, and I'm not saying like now is the time to reprint strip mine. Like I don't I don't want to go that far. Right. But like you know like, right. um, but I would say like you know, um the idea of bring bring in like a two mana sorcery destroy target non-basic land i think now is the time for that and um right. it, it would be great to have something like that something that's like red red destroy target non-basic land like it, it's simple yeah. it's easy and it's effective 
you know, and right, exactly. you, you could put it at uncommon. I, I'm sure they'd put it at mythic because why not? You know, because Wizards of Coast yeah. hates land destruction. But like, yeah, it's it's you know, you think of like uh, I, I realized that I made a um, a faux pas there. The 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 key mechanics of each so each color has things that the other colors don't. So like um, right. red is number one in land destruction, even though green has it too. Um, but uh, you see it more often than red. Right. Yeah, and white white used to be yeah. able to do it, but like um, you know you've got gr white has mass removal, um, blue has counter spells and mill, black has discard and resurrection. Uh, green has mana ramp, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, there, there's these, those are those things. And you look at like things like resurrection, you know, resurrection and discard are getting better every, every set, um, milling and, right. and counter spells get cheaper every day, you know, um, you know, right. so it's, it's like, you, and you think of like the colors that red is supposed to go up against white and blue. All right. Well, mint, right land destruction is key against uh, is key against blue but blue doesn't care right. about blowing up its lands anymore because it's so their spells are so cheap that like blowing up their land right. doesn't mean anything you know um where it used to be um like i remember like it, like i'm sure you remember this too but like during uh the standard that was onslaught and mirrodin there was a tier one land destruction deck that went to world's finals because that's how key land destruction was right. to the format, and we have never seen a deck like that ever again. You know, um, we right. saw. We, I mean, granted, it doesn't. What was it? Plow under. What's that? What, what was it? Plow under. Yeah, you had you had you, you, you had under. you had plow under stone rain and molten rain all in the same standard. Um, yep. So and reap and so and reap and so yeah. So yeah, there was there was like no Actually, way your opponent. You know, there's no way your opponent was going to play. And the, the big other deck at that time, uh, in that standard anyway, was um, was blue-white control cycling. And it's like, if you could not right. stop their um, their plane cycling uh, Eternal Dragon, like, that's, that was your goal, was like, you had to be able to outrace the Eternal Dragon um, because it was right. going to keep giving them lands. You know, uh, so it's like, it was fine if you were like, that's fine, you can go get more planes, but I'm going to blow up all your islands. You know, so right. uh, even Choke, uh, Choke was in the format at that time, and you sided in Choke against blue-white yeah. control. <laughs> you know, like... And, and then, um, and then wasn't, wasn't Flashfires and... and fla yep, yeah, Flashfires flash fires and Choke were... Um, so basically, the three big land spell hates were in there, so... Choke, flash fires, and boil um, were all boil. in eighth edition. Right. So, um, uh, yeah, yeah, like it's like it's like remember land destruction? Like remember remember yeah. how much fun land destruction was? I mean, yes, it is still in modern. There is a land destruction deck in modern. I'm, I'm not going to lie that there is um, and say there isn't, but it's right. not tier one and nobody plays it. Like you know, like it's right. um, because it's, uses it, well, it has one really good matchup, and that's against Tron. <laughs> like you know, like, right. it's the deck that can bring yeah, down right. Tron. You know, um, but everyone else just oh, like no. I'll play something else. <laughs> like you know, right. um, and in fact, that's the yeah. sad part. In modern, one of the best land destruction decks is actually mono blue. You know, um, because mm -hmm. because they have all the spells that say bounce target non land permanent, and or sorry, uh, right. sorry bounce target permanent. So you just bounce their lands back to their hand. And that's, and it's, yeah. you know, and it's, and those spells cost two, one and a blue, you know, yeah. or blue, blue, which is yeah. infinitely cheaper than any land destruction spell out there. So, you know, um, <coughs> it, it's sad to say that your best land destruction is coming from blue. Like, you know, so yeah. I, yeah, I really wish they would so do something about fixing that problem. Yep. Yeah. This guy says, Hey, sacrifice me. And target player sacrifices a land. So your opponent, um, I, I love Punisher effects. So this is kind of like a Punisher effect. Your, your opponent gets to choose the land that they sacrifice, so they can choose their worst land if they want, but they're still sacrificing one. Moving on. Uh, this is kind of a, I'd say this is like a mischievous spell, but like also dealing damage. Uh, creatures you control have 
when this creature dies, it deals more damage to any target. But hey, basically all your creatures are little devils that, you know, people essence of brimstone when they, when they pop. Uh, this phoenix, um, red is, uh, one of red's major creatures is phoenixes. They've always been a favorite of mine. I know red's um, mythic, you know, epic creature is always going to be dragons, but you know, phoenixes are kind of behind them. They're like a high level creature. Um, so it's mm -hmm. fine and haste or 4-4. Four, four. Uh, whatever source you control deals four more damage to a permanent or a player, return it from your graveyard to your hand. I like so that we've been, seeing, these out. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of uh, new phoenixes recently. Uh, to the point where you could actually yeah. almost play a tribal phoenix deck. Um, in commander, anyway. Yeah. You could always play tribal phoenixes before, but like now you could actually... There still isn't a legendary one, but um, there's, right. a, there's enough well, out there. I'd like to see one in Strict What's that? I'd like to see if one's in Strict Save. Yeah? A new set. Hopefully. I'd like to see one. I think it would fit. Well, you know, uh, we'll since they're they're so kind of "quote unquote" not leaning on Harry Potter at all, which they totally are, um, maybe we'll see an Order yeah. of the Phoenix in there. <laughs> yeah, we'll find out. Um, this is a card I came up with that's the custom keyword. Um, it's, this is basically Flame Wave, which is one of my favorite all time cards from back in the day. It's a great um, card, but it costs less. It costs one less to cast. For each creature that attacked this turn. So I'm going to attack you with my army, and then I'm going to make my expensive spell cost less, and then deal you four, or your planeswalker four, and then each of your creatures get dealt four. So I, lo I love that type of broad, you know, damage spell that Red gets. So I had to make my own version of it. Uh, here's a good, um, the um, Punisher effect. You get a rep keep. You get a four four red dragon. But fine, unless no bonus sacrifices land. So hey, you can give me a big flyer, or you can lose a land. So it's pretty a uh, hard bargain to deal there. Um, red gets flip coin effects. Red loves to take chances, and this is a good example of this type of spell. You can only cast this at the beginning of your upkeep. You flip the coin, you win the flip, you take an extra turn after this one. You lose the flip, you end the turn. So it's like, okay, at the beginning of my turn, am I going to take an extra turn, or is my turn already over? So this this would see a lot of play with Karks, Thumb, and other flip coin effects. But yeah, red is that kind of chaotic color that loves to take chances and loves to play around with flip coins. Here's an, actually another flip coin effect, but this is a fight effect. So if you win the flip, uh, for each creature you flip a coin, uh, flipping coins does take time in the game, but yeah, each creature you have to flip a coin for. And then if you win that flip, the creature fights another creature, your choice, but if you lose the flip, the creature fights another target creature at random. So it's like, okay, everyone's fighting everyone. So this could be really fun really crazy. Either way, it's very red. Um, here's a, a Relentless Assault list style effect. Um, when you have all creatures that attack this turn, after this main phase, there's an additional combat phase. At the end of that additional combat phase, end the turn. So it's like, okay, you, you get your additional combat phase, but after that, your turn's done. So again, it has the same type of drawback. I like the the end the turn drawback. Red, red will always get that type of drawback. Um, here's a good um, kind of impulsive uh, ability on a creature. Impulsive invoker deals combat damage to an opponent. Reveal cards from the top of your library into a reveal a sorcery card. That card in your hand. Grab some of the bottom of your library and in order. So it'll, it's kind of a top of the library tutor for a sorcery. You know, you find you'll basically find hopefully your best sorcery, and then you get it in your hand. Maybe it's a wheel of fortune. Who knows? But whatever you dig up. I think I think that's a good impulsive 
um, style effect for red. Um, turmoil, inner turmoil, inner, inner conflict. Um, so I had to make this card. Target creature deals damage equal to its power divided as you choose among any number of targets. So having this guy fight all these <laughs> enemies around him, so he's exasperating and reaching out with his emotions, so felt like that was a good mm -hmm. um, representation of Red's colors. Uh, Jaws of Flame, all damage that we've dealt to target creatures this turn is dealt to all creatures it's control controls this turn instead. So, okay, I'm going to deal your damage 13, I'm going to deal your creature 13 damage with um, oh, what's that? Shivan Meteor. Yeah, Shivan Meteor. Oh, guess what? <laughs> guess what? <laughs> that creature, all damage that's going to be dealt to it, it's going to be dealt to all your creatures. So, I kind of came up with this as the Red's use of fire and earth and uh, elements again. Um, here's a here's a Keldon. Um, Red's all about barbarians and barbarianism. So, whenever Keldon battle caller attacks, other attacking bat barbarians you control get plus one plus one on turn for each other attacking creature. And I mean, I mean come on, good old Keldon Warlord, you know, plus one plus one for each other creature you control. I mean, you know, Red loves creature armies and Red loves pumping them as big as they can get them with power. So I felt like this was a good representation of uh, Kildan and the Barbarians. Um, speaking of, Kranach. Um, this is a character from War. I'm, I'm a bit of a Vorthos myself. Um, I like to design characters out of the story. Kranach uh, was the founder of Keld. Um, he was the first Doyen. Um, so whenever he attacks, other creatures you can control get plus X plus O. Or X number of mountains you control in the lore, like he, he like bonds with the mountain or something. I forget it exactly, but and then he deals X damage to the target. Any target where it gets his two plus number of cards in Kindle all and all graveyards. And it's really going once each turn. Apparently he learns the spell Kindle um in in the lore, so that's why I gave him that ability. Uh, so I felt okay. like this represents the power of the mountain, and the power of fire. So, he's a cool character. Have to look into him. Uh, Lucian's carrier, this one I felt was kind of funny and mischievous. It's an ogre carrying goblins. And so when he enters, when he enters, you get two on them red goblin cowards that can't attack unless you control creature powerful or greater. So, the goblins need the ogre to attack with them. Kind of like uh, mod clunkies. So I felt like that was a fun use of the art and uh, made an ability around it. Here's a here's one that I found uh, I built the I made this one just based on the art as well. I love I love just finding random art and be like, what's a good what would be a good card to make for this? So this is called Out the Trader. You choose a creature and the phone controls. Each other creature that put player controls is one damage to that creature. So basically all of your opponent's creatures say, Oh wait, you're a traitor. We're all gonna you know, stone you to death or stab you to death. So basically you're causing your opponent's creatures to turn on one. <coughs> to turn on one of them. Alright. Um, here's a good kind of chaotic um, fight effect. Uh, choose a creature you control at random, and choose a creature your opponent controls at random. Those creatures fight. So, hey, who's going to end up in this matchup? We'll find out. You know, order. You know, find a way to order your creatures. Roll, roll a die, and see who's going to go into battle. I felt like this was a good representation of a chaotic and fighting effect. Um, Wounds of Fortune is another uh, Punisher effect. Uh, target opponent may have Wounds of Fortune deal five damage to them. That player doesn't. You discard your hand and draw them any cards. So it's like, hey, 
do I get to basically wheel of fortune or win wins a change or do you want to take five so red red I love I love these types of effects red the the, the devil's deal type of effects I used to have back in um, onslaught block I had a, a red um, mono red Punisher deck that actually did really well in the tournament. I got to like the top top four. Um, it was you know, already breaking point, browbeat. Um, what was it? Um, Molten Influence. Book Burning. Uh, it was in there too. Burning. I think I read. Yeah, yeah I remember Book Burning. Um, there's the there's the. Your creature, your creature takes a bolt unless you take five. Yep. Um, then I ran. <laughs> um, there's the double red discard. You have to discard two at random unless you take four. Yeah, I forget all the cards in it, but it it did really well. And I think I threw in some white, and then I ran in like Wrath of the God. So I'd be like, okay, breaking point, take six or wrath. And they take six. Uh, down four more. A rat. Like, okay, you just took six. Guess what? You still are, are going to get a rat. See so yeah, that? That brings me back. I just love that deck. Call it the Lesser of Two Evils. Um, red is also about hedonism. Red loves to like just kind of revel in, you know, it's uh, revelries. So this is kind of a bard. Hey, target creature, you can't block this turn because I've bolted you into a sense of uh, calm or target creature blocks this turn is unstable you know, because I'm riling you into a frenzy. I think I did design a destroy target on this card. That was black red. That could probably be a, a card. Yeah. Yeah, there it is right there. Like, yeah. Two red, yeah. destroy target non beast land. You know, and like I said, you've got it at rare. I'm like, I could see it at uncommon. You know, um, depending on the draft yeah. format. You know, like if it's uh, in draft, if there's not a lot of non basic lands, then that's not really that great. You know, um, but in a format where there are really solid non-basic lands, then yeah, it is the yeah. one that you'd want to be like, well, let's have that uncommon so it can show up in a draft. It, you know, right. people can <laughs> wreck their opponent with it. You know, like can, if you could imagine, like in a format where, um, like Celestial Colon Colonnade, when that was legal, you know, like imagine having mm -hmm. access to this at uncommon. You know, where it's like, okay, well, your Celestial Colonnade is dead. You know, and um, good luck. <laughs> you know, like don't play it because you're gonna have to yeah. play around it now because now you know it's in my hand, or you know I'm probably running it because right. I'm in red. You know. Yep. And um, I'll end this up with uh, a few humorous cards in red that I've made. I had made a card for Francis the Table for her. Um, so plus one, the target non permanent onto the playing area from a height of at least one foot. Put that permanent man's face up. It deals damage to its owner equal to its current mana cost. Minus two. If each creature target player controls onto the player in area from a height of at least one foot. If that creature is in space up, grants the table flipper deals three damage to that creature. And minus six. Flip all lands target player controls onto the player in area from, the, from a height of at least one foot. Each land that doesn't land face up is destroyed. And then minus 20. Flip the playing area. Each player at the playing area loses the game. So if you haven't seen Francis, the table flipper, go on YouTube and there's a great video of him flipping the table after he loses a game of Magic the Gathering. Very, very ungracefully. I've got uh, one for Easter here, uh, Jockle Hops. Kind of a play on words here because of 
Jocko Hops, the actual card. Right. But this is H O P S. Uh, this cut has Undaunted, plus one less for each, each opponent. Uh, and you create a 1 1 red rabbit creature token. Each one damage dealt to any target this turn. So you make a bunch of rabbits based on damage. And then this one, Squizzle, Goblin, Nabizzle, it's a 1 half. And Mana, and 1 red. So 1 1. And whenever you cast a spell, you must add or include the word Izzle in that card's name. If you don't, you have to sacrifice him. And then he has gotcha. And whenever an opponent says Izzle, we return and bring the graveyard to your hand. Because it's basically based on Squee. So I have made. This is a couple, these are a couple old ones. But... So. The first card, and, and like I said, if you can see it in the little tiny guide, then that's fine. Um, all right, so the first one is the April Fool. We had a April Fool's contest, um, I, I believe. I think that's. I know. I, I know this got posted to the Facebook page, so I know that's where it came from. But um, yeah, it's we as we've mentioned earlier. Sure. <laughs> um, red is the color of chaos, and I was literally having a conversation with uh, one of my students today about this thing. You know, I miss the day and age when red was really the color of chaos and we would get these fantastically insane red cards that you're really sure that even the designer's not really sure what the point of this card was. Um, you know, or like or like what it could what it could maybe do. Um, you know, the idea was just like here's a card that just completely screws with the rules of magic. Um and nowadays they try to like limit those things just to silver border. And it's like, I miss the, the days when you could, you know, have a grip of chaos and play. And people are like, wait, that does what now? Wait, why am I doing everything at random? Um, you yeah. know, so I think I actually made a creature that does that too. Yes, they did. Um, but, uh, so here's April fool. It's, it's pretty easy. It's uh it's based on cheaty face. Um, it's pretty terrible. It's a five, five for, for six with haste. That's pretty awful at that time. But if it dies, it goes back to your hand. But uh, the nice thing is if you're able to distract your opponent uh, and that player happens to look away from the table, you can slip April Fools onto the battlefield um, without them noticing. So um, he's even got the flavor test, the flavor text of, dear Lord, what is happening over there? So, you know, get them to look away. Um, obviously, uh, we've already brought this up. Red is the color of, and you're, on my cards, you're going to see a lot of uh, chaos cards because that's what I love to design when it comes to red. I love playing with chaos cards, but this isn't one of them. Uh, red is also the color of fire. And uh, basically, I just took um, an element of my favorite card. Again, my one of my favorite cards was Flame Wave. Um, also loved it. And I turned it into an enchantment. So um, basically, it says whenever um, a creature without flying or a creature you control without flying attacks, Barrier Fire deals four damage to it. So your ground guys aren't getting through and their ground guys aren't getting through. So, um, it, it hits both of you equally. Um, mm -hmm. so, uh, my next card is Blood Dragon, which is based on the, uh, the video game Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, which, uh, I'm going to throw this out here. I literally only included this as a promotion for Far, uh, Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. If you have not played Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, you definitely should. It's one of the best games ever invented. If you are a child of the eighties and nineties, as Kevin and I are. So that's all. There, that's the only reason I put this in here. It's not a great card, <laughs> but it's, that's why it's in I'm here. Seeing, um, I'm seeing it. Yeah. Um, burn it down is, uh, I was doing an experiment with this, with um, cards that were designed specifically around planeswalkers. Um, so this is one that's mm -hmm. designed specifically around Chandra, where um, it's a sorcery, four damage to target creature or player, which is pretty bad. Um, so, um, but however, if you happen to be controlling a, a Chandra at the time that you cast this, you can activate one of her loyalties again. So, um, which is really nice. So, um, yeah, it's just, just a little simple, like, <laughs> Hey, what if here's, here's, you know, playing with cards that like, Hey, here's a card that gets better. If you have this in play. Um, it's still okay. okay. It's not great, but it gets really good once you have a condition that can be met with it. Um, right. This so is many Chandra's. Yeah. Uh, it, it actually. 
good. Yeah. Um, this is a joke card, but I left it as Black Border because this is literally something that could happen in Black Border. Um, it's Can't Close Commando. And um, in it, it says uh, it's got First Strike Trample Haste. Um, however, your opponents may pay four and prevent all the damage that would be dealt to, dealt by it. So, um, nice. you know, it, it, it really doesn't do much. So um, it, it seems like a big flashy card, but it really just doesn't do anything. As long as your opponent has mu uh, mana, they can shut it down pretty easily. Um, you've made one of these too, uh, a desperate act card. So here's mine. It's just a straight up desperate act card. It's uh, take an extra turn, uh, or sorry, target opponent takes an extra turn <laughs> after this one, but you get to draw five cards. So, um, you better hope you get it. <laughs> like, it, that's why I put it on the, the flavor text. Here goes something, you know, <laughs> like, uh, you better hope that something good comes out of these five cards because your opponent's going to take an extra turn. So, um, yeah, that's it was just a little fun thing. I probably would now cost this much less because giving your opponent an extra turn should not cost five mana because you're not going to be able to do anything with those five cards after you've already paid five mana. So, um, maybe it should be like draw five cards and untap all your lands. Yeah. So, um, and as you can see, like some of these, the years I put on here. So I've made that in 2013. So going back and looking at this now, this is massively overcosted and doesn't do enough. So, um, explosive ward. Uh, again, this is another one where we're like, we're, we're playing with the chaos that is red. And this one says, if your opponent has 10 or less life, this enchantment, and this used to be a cycle, um, the enchantments that turned into creatures, uh, under certain conditions. So this is a red one. Creatures. Yeah. The sleeping creatures. Um, this is one that turns into a one, one creature, that says when this creature dies, um, it deals five damage to target creature or player. Um, so it becomes very nasty really quick, but um, you know, your opponent has to be at 10 or less life. So it's a nice little finisher. Um, should you uh, get your opponent low enough um, gift exchange. This was playing with the idea of like, what if gifts on given were, was red, but, used like thieves auction as a concept so this one just says each player picks one thing that they can they currently control and uh non-token permanent uh it should probably be non-token non-land now that i think about it but um and then they exile it and then once everyone's done that then each player chooses someone else on the t on the play uh field to give that card to so you know, mm. each, each person ends up getting a gift from their opponent. Um, not of their choice, though, which is what makes it red. Because obviously blue can steal whatever they want. Um, this is red saying, I get to keep it permanently, but it, it wasn't by choice. So um, this next one, uh, you, some of you guys may remember this because it's I literally posted it last year. Um, this was me just trying to put my favorite Overwatch character, Junkrat, into Magic. And uh, so he just comes in with bomb counters and you can throw the bomb counters at your opponent and blow them up. Um, so um, this is another one. Oh, this should be silver bordered because it involves dice rolling. <laughs> Something I never understood is that coin flipping is black bordered. Dice rolling for some reason is silver bordered. Um, so, but um, I would love to see dice rolling get moved into black border, um, specifically in red. Uh, it is it's a, it's a flame chase oh is it well that's yeah. the, that's the chaos die oh, rolling also. so that's a little different okay. yeah. um yeah but uh this one here is a, it's a, just a fun little creature it's uh he's uh haggard the combustible and he tends to blow up a lot um so and again he's probably over costed at this point but uh when he attacks you roll a six-sided die and depending on which number comes up, something else happens. Like he, uh, on four of these, he sacrifices himself and blows up something else. Um, <laughs> and then uh, on the sixth one, he just failed and you have to roll the die again and try again. So nice. um, here's another little goofy red uh, artifact. It's a hot pocket. We all know these things are toxic and deadly to us. So this is an equipment that you actually can't equip to your own creatures. Um, you can only equip it to your opponent's creatures. So, 
Um, and whenever they attack or block, it deals three damage to them. So it, it really shuts down your opponent's creatures pretty quick. So, yeah. As a real hot well, pocket would. Your, yeah, yeah, it shuts down your stomach pretty good, too. Yeah. So, um,. This next one is just a again. It's more of a it's black bordered, but it is more of a jokey card. It's Hottie McCotterson, uh, based on yep. the old um, Red Hot Hottie. Um, and it's uh, a, honey, yeah. at the beginning of and it plays with the concept of burn counters are actually a thing. So um, there's only one card that makes burn counters, um, but it does exist. And <laughs> this one puts burn <laughs> counters um, on uh, on every creature that's not it. Uh, including your own creatures, and then those creatures take damage equal to the number of burn counters on them. So, um, yeah, and they can't uh, they can't block because they're on fire. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. um, and you can throw more burn counters on creatures to kill them. So, uh, we already mentioned this next card, uh, things like this, which is just taking a, a sorcery or an instant or an enchantment and putting it on sticks, giving it a body. Um, so this is Warp World on a creature. <laughs> Um, that's all it is. It's just warp um, world on a creature. So, um, cause why not? Cause why not? Uh, I love warp world. It's one of my favorite. It's, it's one of the last red chaos cards. I remember them printing that I really, really enjoyed. Um, and that's, this is why I brought this up. Cause today, um, this is the card when I was telling my student about, uh, about old school red, red chaos cards. Um, I had just beaten him with uh, warp world cause I cast it five times in a row. So, um, he was like, that was not fun. <laughs> I'm like, no, it wasn't. That was the point. So, um, here's another goofy one. This is supposed to be silver bordered as well. Cause it involves changing states that you can't do. Um, and that is old, old spice body spray is too powerful to stay in its own deck. Uh, you shuffle it into target players library and that player draws cards and reveals them until they reveal the old spice body spray. Uh, at which point, Old Spice Price Spray deals damage to them equal to the number of non-land cards they drew. So, um, as you can see, there's the Old Spice guy punching through <laughs> another card. So, yeah. Um, just yeah, this is uh, this is a counter spell I could see being printed in red. Um, usually, when we see counter spells show up in other colors, they end up having some sort of um, effect that um, is not typical blue. Blue gets straight up counters, but uh, other colors get counters that either have a drawback or have some way to get around it. Um, this is the same thing. Um, we were talking about the um, things like browbeat and book burning and stuff like that. That's what this is. It's counter spell that does that. Um, it counters target spell unless um, your opponent lets uh, lets pay to play deal damage equal to the spell they just cast. So. You know, if you, you know, I'll let you land that. Um, giving echo. Yeah, it's like it's like I'll let you, um, I'll let you resolve that consecrated sphinx. You just have to take six damage to put it into play. You know, and right. you know then it's up to them to decide whether or not they want to let it be countered, or take the damage. You know, and taking damage against a red deck can be suicidal. So um, that's why I put it in there. I'm like, I think it works really, really well with red. Um, this one here is a, a yet yet again another another silver bordered card as you can as you've guessed from the previous couple of weeks I really love designing silver bordered cards. Um, this one's just super sneaky attack and the difference here between this and sneak attack is that uh, you can attack other players in other games with your creatures. So, um, uh, the area effect. Yes. It's so, like, hey, I'm gonna attack you there. So you know, Emrakul uses Annihilator Six. It was highly effective. So, um, uh, this next one is, you know, because I can't keep my own politics out of my card designs. This is a surprise mechanic. And, uh, as we know, these were labeled by, uh, game companies as it's okay to have gambling mechanics in your game. Cause they're not gambling mechanics. They're surprise mechanics. So, um, people love surprise mechanics. Um, and it definitely is not gambling. So, um, this is a surprise mechanic that like, uh, you enchant creature and, uh, when it, uh, enters, when this roll enters the battlefield, uh, you get to roll a, uh, six sided die and the creature gains one of these abilities, um, which is amazing. Cause most of these aren't red. So, <laughs> 
uh, it really is a truly surprise mechanic. So, um, and then my last one I have here is a nod to, uh, I actually designed this as you can see in 2014, but, uh, we just got this in, uh, something similar to this in, um, Kalheim where, where they, so here's Thor and, uh, Thor's indestructible. He's a seven, five and, uh, he's a God. This is actually, I, I think this is 2014. I think gods may have been a creature type by that point, but, um, as long as uh, Thor has Mjolnir attached to him, uh, he can tap to just deal five damage to target player. So he, he becomes really, really good. And then to really play with the concept of something like that, we have Thor's hammer, which can only be equipped to Thor. So um, yeah. no one else can use it. So, um, But it, once you've equipped it to him, he actually gets even more abilities uh, you can unattach it, and uh, it deals five damage to target creature. And it also has, you can pay red red and give Thor flying until end of turn, because that's how Mjolnir Excellent. works. So, um, yeah, that's I, I I thought that'd be fun to like play with mm -hmm. play with a card that does nothing in your deck unless you have the other card, the other half of the card. So, um, and that's why I gave this one indestructible because originally I didn't. Um, and I'm like, well, that just makes it too easy for your opponent to just kill this the second it comes into play, and then you can't do anything with the hammer. Like, the hammer just sits there. So, um, as you can see, he's actually very expensive. He's 8 mana. But for what he does, 8 mana indestructible 7-5 seems pretty dang good, even without the hammer. So, um, nowadays for 8 mana, he would probably have a way of, like, when he comes into play, search for the hammer, put it in your hand. Um, put it in your hand, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, for the, for the uh, equipment, at least. Yeah, because while this card is pushed by today's standards, it's not pushed enough. So, um, you're not going to get people to buy booster packs with this. So, um, but yeah, that's that's all I got for red. As I mentioned last week, red is my favorite color. Um, I could I could have many 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 more examples. I literally had to stop looking at cards so we could do this show because I, I have so many red cards. I love designing red cards. It's my favorite color. It's what I started in. It, it speaks to me. It's my play style. Um, so, um, yeah, I've never had a bad time playing red. Like, you know, um, yeah, that, it, that's, uh, that's uh, pretty much all I got. You got anything else you want to add? I think that, that's about it. I also designed red counter spell as well. But I, mine was a flip coin one. Uh, you choose a target spell and flip coin. If you win the flip, counter the spell. If you lose the split, the flip, that spell deals you damage equal to its amount of cost. So it's one of those, hey, I might counter your spell, but I might take damage too. Yeah. So that was my version of a red flip coin counter spell. Yeah. It seems we have a lot of similar design yeah. aspects as what red is really doing and um i think we covered it pretty well, well. I, I, that's i would say like red is probably aside from like chaos cards red is probably the easiest color to design for um simply yeah, because red, well red's design red's play space is so narrow you know um it's aggro it's burn you know like it's it's not really you know there's there's no real deep thinking cards or like heavy thought you know plot cards it's mostly just put creature in play, attack with creature, you know, um, yeah. which makes it a little easier to design for. Um, it's why, like, I think I mentioned it the other day. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't really love designing for blue because I have to really think really hard to design for blue, um, you know, and versus, you know, designing something for red. Man, I could design commons, uncommons, everything for red. It's, it's so easy because red is so narrow in its scope. You know, um, right. so it's, it's also why they tell you, like, if you're going to teach someone how to play, um, teach them with mono red first, you know, because it, it is so basic, you know, there's, there's not a lot of thought put into how to play mono red. So, you know, no. you can toss someone a burn deck and, you know, within five minutes, they'll understand the concept of a burn deck, you know, um, Oh, look, you got scent of cinder. Yeah. Lots of red cards in my hand. Oh, look, I have... I <laughs> yeah, oh, look, I have a lightning bolt. I have an untapped mountain. Oh, I figured this out. <laughs> like, you know, like... You know, it doesn't take thought, you know. 
So, all right. Well, then we're going to go ahead and wrap it up there, guys. Uh, next time we'll yep. talk about green. Going to the green. Guys, thanks for joining. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you next time.